Welcome uh, everybody at the seventh uh, session in the webinar series uh, of uh, digital innovation. Uh, today we're here with uh, Robert-Jan Lup from uh, Victor. Welcome uh, Robert-Jan uh, to the session. And as you might have heard, uh, we'll uh, do the session in uh, English uh, because we want to uh, reach a broader audience. Um, so uh, yeah, the, the reason why we are uh, giving this, uh, this webinar series is because we see a lot of uh, innovation going on in the uh, industry in terms of uh, design, uh, words like parametric design, automation, and stuff like that are uh, more and more uh, getting more and more popular. And all all kinds of companies are using these kind of new technologies to uh, create a more efficient uh, project or a more efficient project delivery. Uh, so we as Baumestal want to uh, threshold the current state of the art. Uh, by inviting every month uh, one of the front runners in in our industry, which uh, does these kind of things on a daily basis, oh, so uh, that we uh, can create some awareness and can uh, define what the current status is, and what we actually want to achieve is to uh, 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 inspire people so that they will uh, use these kind of new possibilities in order to uh, yeah, uh, improve the efficiency efficiency of your work so we as an industry can uh, can, uh, can grow yeah can grow that's uh, that that is the mission um so um before you start your presentation uh, i have some uh, house rules to announce uh, if everyone can uh, turn off their mic and shut off their camera uh, then our yeah our broadcast will be uh, as smooth as possible and uh, lastly, the questions will, uh, you can ask them during the presentation, but we will uh, uh, handle them at the end. Uh, and you can ask them either in English or in Dutch. Uh, if it's Dutch, I will translate them. And special to this presentation is that we have some polls in between. Uh, so um, th these will pop up on your screen and uh, you will, uh, it would be very nice if you could, uh, could um, uh, answer them. Um, so, um, yeah, Rob-Jan, uh, let's get started. <laughs> All right. Um, great. So, um, it's a, a presentation with a lot of firsts. The first one in English and the first one with the polls. Um, let's get started with the poll then, I guess. Let's, okay. uh, let's take it away immediately with the, with the first poll before I start. So, first poll is, what do you do? What do you do? Yes. So, I'm uh, curious. I want to have a little bit more of an uh, interactive uh, uh, presentation and uh, I try to reach out to everybody uh, who is uh, on the other side of the camera. Um, so I figured let's uh, let's do a, a poll and to have a little bit of a feeling with who am I, who am I actually talking. Um, I just want to have a feeling on uh, who is on the other side and what do you do? Are you an engineer, engineer uh, slash constructor? Sorry, I see those are two different. Uh, but uh, an engineer or modeler, an architect, or project management or something uh, completely di different, maybe a dentist or uh, a veterinary, I don't know. Uh, if you could uh, answer the, the poll question, that would be uh, that would be great. This is, how is it going with the polls? <laughs> uh, I see some, uh, some 17 votes are coming in. So uh, what I can see over here is that uh, most of them are structural engineers. Okay. Uh, and uh, for the rest, it's, uh, it, it, it depends. Uh, and a lot of people also uh, chose other. Other, all right. Uh, 20 votes so far, 22, yeah, okay. So the structural engineers are uh, are, are winning. Um, good, that's good to know. Um, let's take it away. And the first, yeah, before I start with my presentation, uh, I wanna tell you a little bit about uh, who I am. So you get a feeling, uh, uh, yeah, who, who is talking to you? Uh, my name is uh, Robert Jan Lup. Um, I uh, work uh, at Victor as an application developer. Um, I will tell more about what Victor is uh, later in the presentation. Um, I have a background in civil engineering and, and construction management and engineering. Um, I did uh, that kind of work for about a year, but I wasn't really excited with the whole uh, yeah with that line of work. So um, after uh, after a year. I uh, changed my focus more towards BIM and uh, got involved with 4D scheduling, 3D models, um, with um, systems engineering, 
uh, data and file management, uh, stuff like that. And that's also the path that brought me into, into coding in uh, programming, um, which I really, really enjoyed. And it was for me, was an, it was a big eye opener. Uh, hence the picture that I chose uh, for the background. Um, it made me see that there is a lot of, um, you can have a lot of creativity within coding and that everything we use nowadays basically has um yeah it has been built by somebody right it, it it doesn't appear out of thin air it is it has been coded by someone the all the the mobile apps you use on your phone um the the web applications you use teams the, the things we are using right now they all rely on software which has been built by by somebody this is an uh, amazing tool coding and um, um yeah i wanted to do more with that so uh, last year uh, I switched jobs and uh, joined Victor as an application developer. And now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm coding uh, every day, which makes me very, uh, very happy. Um, then uh, uh, maybe uh, a little bit about my, uh, no, I'm, I, won't, I won't tell about all of my hobbies, but um, as the, the viewers can see, we are sitting in a winter wonderland. I figured that since we're sitting in front of a green screen, I thought it would be nice to uh, to to change our scenery, and uh, yeah. this year we cannot go snowboarding or skiing, so I figured this is a nice way to be a little bit on the piece. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well. Today I made the wrong dis decision of uh, choosing for uh, for a green sweater. So if I move to the back a little bit, yeah, I'll I'll get I'll get invisible. Yeah, I I, I will point where the Ryan is. If yeah. if you lose him, let me know. <laughs> um, yeah, great. So that's that's a little bit about uh, about me. But obviously, uh, you're not precisely here for me, but you're here for uh, what I come to tell. And um, so the, the big question for this, for this presentation is, um, is the engineer of the future a developer? Uh, and I chose the background picture of uh, Back to the Future because in this presentation, I want to go, um, uh, I, I want to take you in, a, I want to do a time travel with you to the past. Um, and uh, take you um, to the future. And uh, well, it's impossible to predict the future, of course, but uh, to make some observations based on what we see uh, in the past. Um, as you, uh, as we already did, we already started with uh, with a poll, and there will be some more during the presentation. So uh, uh, please uh, reply to those. That would be great. And. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, I think we just agreed upon that we will uh, um, keep them for uh, for the end. Um, yeah, unless something you think is not clear, then just please pop in. And uh, I'm, I'm used to having a more of an interaction with yeah, my yeah, audience, yeah. so uh, <laughs> this is uh, yeah new to me. Um, let's get started. So, is the engineer of the future a developer? Buckle up because we're going back to the to the 50s. We, we stepped in the DeLorean. We came to the 50s, um, and this is what the uh, yeah the engineering rooms back in the 50s looked like. A lot of people, a lot of uh, big big tables, uh, working with pen and paper. Um, yeah, I, I, I uh, myself I cannot imagine that um, that you would have to work like like this. Uh, to me, this is ancient history. But I think uh, likewise uh, those people couldn't imagine that uh, their pencil and their paper would have been replaced by uh, uh, a keyboard and, uh, and, uh, and a mouse and a monitor. Um, what I think is interesting about these pictures, if you look at the ones uh, uh, down on the right side, you see people that are actually laying on their, on their drawings. Um, they're on, on top of each other because obviously they're big, paint, eh, big, uh, uh, big drawings, so you need a lot of, of room. So to spare some room, they are sitting on top of each other. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's always nice to see uh, where we came from, and it helps me to explain like the things that I see uh, happening nowadays. Um, what they didn't know back at the time, they probably would have laughed with it, um, is that um, um, around that period, so around the 50s, the first introduction of computer-aided design was uh, introduced, and um, uh, obviously it was not uh, very successful in the beginning because you have a very big machine. Uh, the user interface was very unfriendly. Look at how many buttons there are on, on the, on the top, top left side. Um, and what they, what they did was basically they, they, they replaced um, the pen and paper for a, yeah, a digital uh, pen, literally, because yeah, as you can see on the top left and on the top right, they are literally holding uh, pens to, to do the drawing. Obviously, the, the, the big plus side of 
uh, this uh, compared to uh, pen and paper is that you make uh, less mistakes, you are more precise, and you can easier uh, make copies, uh, etc. Uh, but it took a, a very long time before this technology was uh, um, truly implemented. Uh, it started with aviation and aerospace, um, and obviously construction uh, uh, is always a little bit slower regarding innovation. So. It, uh, it took a while, but uh, eventually it also, uh, I think it was in the 80s that Autodesk came with their first uh, AutoCAD uh, program. So it, it, it took a while. Um, but eventually uh, the computer uh, took over the drawing, uh, the drawing halls. Then, um, so from, from this 2D uh, models, uh, it was a very logical next step to create 3D models because 3D models uh, yeah, if you uh, if you slice them, you get 2D drawings and you can generate them uh, faster. Um, so it was around the, the 80s. So when CAD was uh, uh, successfully implemented, it was around the 80s that uh, the, the first 3D models started to appear. But obviously they were also, again, not very successful and it took a while. It was until the 20s, so, so 2000s, the zeros basically, <laughs> um, that um, uh, it, it got a little bit more successful. Um, and then also came the implementation of BIM. And obviously it, it, it is a little bit more than just the drawing we saw from the beginning. Um, uh, we can do some more, more analysis. We started added, uh, adding data to the models. But in, in principle, if you, if you dumb it down, it's, it's still the same thing as it, as it was 50 years ago. We are still drawing and creating uh, most of the time to the uh, uh, yeah, sheets out of it. Um, a small anecdote, I was involved in, an, uh, in, a, in, a, in a project that was about uh, two years ago um, to show you how well the construction industry is adopted. And for this uh, project, uh, we were arguing whether we had to use 3D models or not. So uh, this is, um, um, what is it, T 2019. Uh, we were having a discussion whether we should use 3D models uh, or not. Um, luckily, I, I, I couldn't I couldn't believe what I was hearing, uh, and uh, uh, luckily we eventually chose to to go for the 3D models. But uh, uh, to give you an idea of how slow this process goes, right? And from the 80s on, there was this first implementation, but then it, it took up until now before 3D model got not even truly embraced, apparently. Um, so this got us to. Uh, to another uh, a new innovation uh, where everybody uh, is very, uh, which is a very hot topic, is the parametric design. Or um, um, yeah, um, in, in this case, um, we're looking at some Rhino and Grasshopper models. And um, yeah, once again, um, I, I think this is a very interesting uh, technology. And uh, a lot of people are uh, seeing this as the new holy grail, the big revolution. Um, but I don't think it's it's a revolution. I see this more as part of the evolution. So. And once again, where we came from paper drawing, we went to uh, 2D, 2D sorry, uh, drawing to 3D drawing. And this is just another way of drawing, you know, drawing with notes. And um, uh, of course, this gives you, gives you more freedom. But uh, in the end, we're still um, creating the same, yeah, the same end products as we were before, namely drawings. Um, but what I do think is very interesting about this new development is that um, in contrary to a 3D model, you now get to put some knowledge within this uh, within this model. So you basically are encapsulating your knowledge into this into this model. So when you when you shift the wall uh, in a 3D model, nothing happens. But if you shift the wall in a, in a parametric design, then the rest also starts to uh, starts to shift. And uh, I think that is very interesting. But um, well, not the downside, but where these tools are not so good in yet is um, exposing this knowledge to the rest of the world. So uh, this is what we call uh, the democratization of, uh, of not knowledge. Um, these tools are not so good in, in, in that. Um, most of the time what you see is that these models are uh, standalone um, uh, yeah, documents basically on somebody's machine. And the end user is also the one who created it. Um, we can share this. We do this by sending it uh, three, uh, through email or uh, by sharing it uh, through a SharePoint site, something like that. Um, but it's not a, a truly a democratization of, uh, of this knowledge. Another thing I, uh, I think is interesting about this uh, uh, visually programming 
um, is that it introduces programming uh, principles to the engineer. So um, um, most people haven't uh, don't have a lot of experience with coding, and um, it's it, yeah, it, it is scary. I, I can see why it is scary for me too. The first time when I saw this uh, this code on a machine, if all of these weird syntax, you have these uh, bright colors, you have these names that you it doesn't make any sense what what's going on. Um, so it's a very big step to to start with zero knowledge uh, to start coding. With visual programming, it it looks a lot yeah more friendly, right? You have this little block, it's a function, you have an input, you have an output, you can combine them together and, and you create something. But you will eventually turn up to a point where these nodes are no longer sufficient and you will try to write your own code. So you get pressed into uh, yeah, writing your own nodes and uh, most of these programs allow you to introduce some own code. Um, and I think this is very important that the engineers get exposed to um, yeah, to what it's like of being a software developer. It's like there are some principles that are introduced to you through this way uh, of um, of building models. And um, this brings me to uh, to the next poll, actually, um, and that's the one. Um, so I've been talking about this Grasshopper tool, uh, which I think is interesting. But of course, there are a lot of other ways of creating tools. Um, so I'm uh, I'm interested to know from the audience uh, what do you use to develop your own tools. So maybe you don't develop any tools at all. That's also a possible answer. And if uh, if it's not you, then it can also be your company, right? So if your company uses, um, uh, for instance, a lot of Excel or Grasshopper or Dynamo, Matlab, Python, or uh, or any other, uh, uh, I'm I'm interested to hear what you what you do. It's interesting yeah. to see uh, somebody uh, put uh, down uh, other and I see someone posting C sharp. OK, cool. <laughs> cool. Nice. C sharp. That's uh, actually that's my first coding language, which I, I started to use. It was uh, it, I was using Stingray back at the time. It's called uh, Autodesk uh, 3ds Max. It, uh, it is OK. <laughs> and um, I use it for um, uh, you can make this virtual reality experiences uh, in that program and um, it, it's actually it also works with uh, visual programming. So you have these blocks and nodes which you can combine. But then uh, I uh, I wanted to do something which was not possible with these nodes. And then I had to program myself. And I started copying stuff from Stack Overflow. I didn't know what I was doing, but apparently it was C sharp. So that was my first true uh, coding experience, I guess. Yeah, I actually have the same experience. Uh, uh, yeah, I also really? started uh, using C sharp because you have this really easy to uh, apply tutorials for making your own grasshopper components ah, yeah, in C Sharp. Yeah. Okay. And that's why I, where I picked up. Uh, so you coding. too, and ah, it's good to hear. So you too, you started from uh, Grasshopper Dynamo and yeah. that's the way you got introduced into coding. Yeah, yeah, because using visual programming made the, the thresholds a lot, a lot lower because you immediately see what you are doing. Yeah. And that's really important in learning something. Yeah. Yeah. Because you need to know if you're doing it correctly yeah. or not. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You have a lot of visual feedback. Yes, I I, uh, I agree. That's for an introduction. It's uh, very helpful. Do you go to more uh, now? Uh, I start to learn uh, Python. OK, uh, so. Uh, uh, yeah, to, to, uh, because a lot of people are currently using Python yeah. and in uh, C Sharp, the, 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 the users uh, it's it's a little bit smaller. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's the the, the, a, the plus side of Python. Obviously, a lot of open source, big community. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it, uh, it, yeah. cool. Let's see what the the audience uh, replied. And a lot of uh, Grasshopper, Dynamo, and Python. Yeah, and uh, some Excel. Some Excel. Yeah, it's also yeah. It's there, there's one person actually uh, pointing out MATLAB, MATLAB, which I didn't expect. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> OK, cool. And uh, also some people who don't build any tools at all. Great. Let's go to the to the next question. Um, because I have another one for you guys. Um, so for whom do you create these tools? Are these tools, uh, as I described earlier, maybe only for yourself? Um, or are these tools for you and your colleagues? Uh, maybe do you work together with a partner company? And do you make tools to smoothen the, uh, yeah, the, the, the co uh, co-working? Or do you make it for uh, uh, a client, so uh, an end user, let's say? 
Okay, we're already, already have a lot of votes. Yeah, fifteen votes. And most people say uh, my colleagues. My colleagues. Which I uh, would find surprising. I would yeah, uh, guess uh, myself. Yeah, I, I was also expecting uh, more people to answer myself actually. Um, oh, it's slowly growing. <laughs> myself is slowly growing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not completely a tie. Most people do it for other people. Okay, that's interesting to know. That's good to know. And then um, my final question is: um, How much time do you spend? Um, oh. uh, maybe we change the, the 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 answers for this question, but that's okay. Uh, so how much time do you spend on um, developing these tools per month? So per, is it something? Month, okay. So they have to assume per month because the. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, do we, so if you if you in other words if you created a tool once and and uh, that's it then it's probably half a day per month and if you are doing this uh, a lot then uh, maybe up to a week per month that you uh, spend time on this. Half a week. Ah, okay. So we have some serious developers here. That's that's cool. Cool. Okay, so <laughs> we had a lot of structural engineers um, and they make a lot of applications for their colleagues and mostly by doing it in uh, Grasshopper and Dynamo. This is, I'm, I'm jumping to conclusions, yeah. but uh, 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 forgive me. Uh, and, um, and they're doing it, what was it? A, a uh, week per month? Yeah, that, that, that was not really, uh, there, there was no of these answers was really outstanding okay. or uh, standing out. Okay, so um, yeah, that, I think that's uh, that, that's interesting. I, I would have maybe expected to have it a little bit lower, but uh, that's uh, that's only good. I think it's a very nice development to hear. Um, yeah, let's continue with the presentation. Uh, I have a very uh, sim yeah simple um, uh, visualization. Uh, on the left side, you see uh, technology companies, and on the right side, you see engineering companies. And uh, this is back in the 50s. So. Um, the technology companies, uh, they didn't have a lot of knowledge because the, the bars, they represent the, the amount of knowledge uh, at, at these different uh, uh, companies. The technology companies did not have so much uh, knowledge, um, but then when they, oh yeah, I forget that I have to press here. When they uh, started implementing uh, CUT and that got adopted by the, uh, by the engineering companies, uh, yeah, they, they got some knowledge of uh, of the field of engineering and uh, the engineers, they yeah, they they could lose some knowledge because there was no longer the need to know how to hold your pencil and uh, draw a line because this was done by the computer. Uh, obviously, uh, 3D was uh, implemented, uh, BIM was implemented, we're moving towards parametric design and a lot of the knowledge that, uh, that the engineering companies uh, yeah, had to have no longer was required because it's getting replaced by a technology. Now, if I'm in a, eh, if you would <laughs> continue with this trend, maybe you would get something like this. So this might be the future then. So uh, technology companies will take over. Google is going to develop the bridges of tomorrow. And of course, there always will be uh, somewhere there will be a structural engineer who has to do uh, the, the, the exclusive stuff, which uh, cannot be uh, done by these generic models. But 99% of the work is done by uh, technology companies. That's a very, uh, if you're a, if you're a structural engineer right now, then you might be, uh, find this a very uh, a scary uh, thought. Um, but uh, this is not how I, uh, I, I see the future. I, I see a future where um, these two um, yeah, move toward each other and in which um, the engineering companies, because there are a lot of smart uh, people out there, one is sitting uh, next to beside me, he's <laughs> already moving much. towards uh, coding. So there are a lot of people who are seeing the potential of coding, who are getting introduced to this new concept through, uh, for instance, visual programming, uh, and who are starting to embrace it. And um, they're doing it for different reasons. So some are uh, doing it to uh, improve internal work processes and to um, um, uh, be able to um, create a design quicker and uh, more efficiently and others are even uh, exploring the terrain of um, changing their business model. So for instance, introducing microservices or even applications uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the outside world. Um, so as an engineer, uh, if you're an engineer and you're scared, uh, I would say go back in time, go back to the 50s, remember that guy who was laying on the floor. Um, yeah don't be that guy yeah? don't be the last one to to lay on the floor but uh, get up on your feet 
and uh, and start uh, um, uh, start improving your skills regarding this, uh, this these new technologies. So if you haven't already, uh, I would say uh, um, get started with Dynamo Grasshopper or whatever not to uh, uh, to introduce yourself with these new concepts and set for yourself I don't know a deadline. Within five years, I uh, I wrote my uh, my first uh, Python or C sharp script. Uh, and I started to embrace this new technology because I think we, what we can conclude is that the world is changing and technology is uh, playing uh, a more and more profound role within um, the engineering industry. And uh, it's up to us how far uh, the blue uh, line will, uh, will go. Um, so uh, yeah, let's get busy. Um, <clears throat> this is, oh, that's uh, too fast. This is, the, um, uh, yeah, you can see this is a small timeline on the right side is where you start when you start uh, uh, digitizing a process. Yeah? So uh, back to the 50s, we're working on paper and the first thing you do is you're going to copy that work and do it uh, uh, on a computer. And then uh, um, uh, on the most right side, there's the, uh, the true democratization of your knowledge where anybody can use uh, uh, the knowledge you have. I think that most companies are currently in uh, the automate optimize uh, kind of uh, uh, scenario where they, um, yeah, um, they are working digital and they, they are doing some optimizations, but uh, they're having difficulties to truly share their knowledge. Uh, distribution is what I said earlier, often done uh, through emails and whatnot, but um, um, get, and capturing the knowledge. Uh, in, 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 into assets and distributing those uh, is not something that, um, that you see a lot yet. Um, and if you want to do this, obviously uh, what a very logical step is, is to, uh, to move towards the, um, uh, the internet. So uh, uh, web applications, um, that's obviously where I'm, I'm heading um, because um, you can access them anywhere, anytime. Um, and um, you don't need to install anything else. And so again, with the Grasshopper and Dynamo examples, yeah, super great that you created this uh, this uh, script for yourself or for your colleague. Well, yeah, but your colleague has to, has, to has to know how to handle it. Has to know how to where the latest version is. He has to have the right uh, installation on his machine, etc. If you move it all to the web and you have just a simple web application uh, interface. Um, then it's yeah. Then you tr truly democrat uh, democratize your 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 knowledge uh, to the world. Um, so uh, think again of 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 the green and the blue uh, bars that I showed earlier. Uh, this is going to be hard, right? If you're if you're an um, engineering company, you you don't know tech. That's it's plain and simple as that. Um, it's going to cost you a lot of time. It's going to cost you a lot of money to uh, create uh, these web applications. You have to know all kinds of uh, different uh, programming languages. You have to uh, um, uh, set up servers, do the backend, think about cybersecurity, version control, uh, user management, all of that uh, kind of stuff. Um, but um, yeah, that's, yeah it's, it's not necessary because there are a lot of uh, platforms out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, who can help you by doing this? And in other industries, I think this is interesting. In other industries, you already see, uh, once again, construction is uh, lagging behind. Uh, in other industries, you see that a lot of um, citizen developers stand up. So there are already these platforms and citizen developers, uh, in our case, that would be then an engineer who is developing. They create these applications, which they share uh, through these platforms with their colleagues or even uh, you call this companies. a citizen developer. What do you mean with that? So <clears throat> a citizen developer is um, you are no true software developer. You haven't stu uh, studied civil uh, um, computer science or anything like that. You have studied, for instance, uh, uh, civil engineering, and that's what you're good at. But then through these platforms, you are enabled to share this knowledge with other people by easily creating uh, applications. That's what yeah, uh, and to, to summarize what, is, what a citizen developer is. And also in the construction, you see um, uh, more and more of these platforms uh, popping up. Uh, you had a guest uh, recently, Peckhunt obviously does this, but uh, uh, the, the best of the best obviously uh, is Victor. And um, uh, I want to show you a little bit more about what then Victor is and how it works. So and I'll therefore, share yeah. my screen right now. Yeah. So, you're an engineer, 
and you like creating advanced models, optimizations, and analysis tools. But sometimes, you have the feeling that you're part of a workflow from a previous era. Calculations and reports are updated manually. Too much time is wasted in communication, and people are doing the same repetitive tasks over and over again. You want everyone to work smarter by creating custom software tools. But starting from scratch and connecting different software packages can be complex and time-consuming. But why try to reinvent the wheel when you can use a platform designed to help you with all of that? Introducing Victor, the development platform that helps you build advanced engineering tools quickly and use them together with anyone you want. How does it work? It is easy. In three steps, you can create awesome apps just using Python. Step one, add different fields to define your input parameters. Step two, write your logic and if needed, use our off-the-shelf integrations to connect software and calculate the solution. Step three, visualize the results as 3D models, interactive graphs, data-driven maps, and so much more. Now that your app is ready, deploy it in the cloud Invite colleagues and clients to use them and work together to find the best solution for the project while keeping your intellectual property safe. You can even create a common workspace for your company where you can create and share apps. And no need to worry, we take care of the rest. Visit our webpage and discover how you can build user-friendly web applications and share them with anyone you want. Victor, automate the boring, engineer the awesome. Yeah, so this was uh, the video. I hope it, it, it helped to give a little bit of an uh, image of what Victor does. Uh, but to summarize, um, we have a uh, Python uh, software development kit. This sounds like a, a mouthful, but basically what, what it says is that you can uh, create web applications very easily by writing Python code. So instead of that, you have to write HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and that you have to set up backend and all of that stuff, you have just uh, to write a little bit of uh, Python code and we take care of the rest. So, um, and yeah, we enable you to become this citizen developer and eh, what I explained earlier and to create these applications and share them with your colleagues. Obviously, it's uh, it would be ridiculous if you would have to uh, reinvent the wheel for every uh, thing that you already have uh, laying on the shelf. So maybe you have some very nice CI models, or you have uh, a Grasshopper script or Dynamo script or, or whatever not, and you want to integrate it with your application, that can be done. We have a lot of uh, integrations which we can uh, apply right off the shelf. Um, and by doing so, yeah, so that's that's my next point basically. Yeah? So if you would do it from scratch, if you want to build a, a company-wide asset, it's going to take you uh, an X amount of time and, and money, but it's going to be a lot because uh, you have to do it all from scratch. And then uh, by using Victor, you get a head start because we have all of these standard components, uh, for instance, like version control, user management, it's all taken care of. Uh, the only thing you need to do is is, uh, is write your domain knowledge, put that in logic and, and put it in there and, uh, and, 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 and get it out there and, and share it with, uh, with your, uh, yeah, your partners or your, uh, your clients. Um, that's what uh, Victor does. Um, obviously, it's nice to show an, uh, a small example. This is from uh, um, something we did last week. We showed it on, uh, it's, uh, you, you, you could already see it on, on, on LinkedIn. And it's already playing on your screen. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. Okay, great. So uh, you can already see what's happening. <clears throat> um, this was a demo that we did with uh, Arcades, uh, with Michael van Telge. He was also a speaker uh, on, on this. Uh, yeah, the first, uh, the first session. The first session, all right. Yeah. Um, they had this uh, Dynamo script, which they wanted to uh, yeah, to see if, if it could be integrated with Victor. And uh, last week, uh, me, uh, a colleague, um, uh, Michael and Igor, we uh, spent some time in it and, 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 uh, and got it working. Um, yeah, and this is also our Victor application looks like. So you have, uh, can, we, can we play it again? See if that works. No, maybe if I do it like this. Yeah, so this is the Dynamo script you see. Uh, and then uh, this is a Victor uh, interface uh, on the, so we're entering the entity. And then on the left side, you have all of these uh, input fields, which now link up to the Dynamo model. 
and then on the right side you have some output and that can be a 3d visualization it can also be a graph or it can be a data view or a map view or whatever not um uh, yeah, and so now it integrates with Dynamo, but you can also write your own logic, for instance, in Python, or you can integrate it with uh, packages like, I don't know, like uh, what I mentioned before, like a SIA or a, uh, yeah, stuff like that. Um, is there anything else I want to tell here? No, I don't think so. I think we're moving towards the end. Yeah, um, so I've been, uh, I've, I've been uh, talking a lot, uh, like a waterfall of words, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm, now I'm very curious to hear what the, what, the, what the audience thinks and uh, if they want to share their thoughts with me. Maybe they have some questions. Yeah, at the moment, I did not see any questions yet. Okay. Only, uh, I was very as, clear. Aside from uh, uh, some technical questions. Yeah, you were very clear because I wrote down some questions and you tackled them even Mom. during your presentation. All right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I really like the timeline that you said about uh, where we were uh, 50 years ago, maybe 70 years ago, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, how this, uh, how we are evolving or developing uh, as an industry, um, or especially we as a construction industry. Yeah. But I recently saw a LinkedIn post about uh, Victor doing also some uh, naval uh, industry uh, stuff. Yeah. There was uh, this, this boat with a configuration. Yeah, yeah. So I was wondering, how, how are we as a construction industry or the architects or engineering construction in, uh, industry doing compared to other industries? Industries, yeah. Yeah, I think. Are, yeah, are, we, are we good or are we not so good? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I need to answer that. I, ooh, uh, it's difficult for me to say. Um, so, like a true answer is difficult to give, but uh, if I have to make an observation, then in the trends you see um, aerospace and aviation, for instance, that's like um, they're very high tech. So that's why they, they, they were front runners in the beginning and they probably still are. And um, yeah, we in, in the construction industry, we tend to be a little bit, uh, well, not slow, but we, let's say skeptical. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think it's logic because we have a lot of projects where it's um, there's a high time pressure and a high pressure in terms of costs. So we don't really have time to innovate because we need to build that, that, that thing, that project right now, you know, and there's always the client who tries to, to squeeze out the, uh, the margins. So I think it makes sense that, um, that we are not the front runners. Um, so I was saying, um, that I, I think we're not um, the front runners, but I don't think we're doing uh, too bad either. And I don't know if there <laughs> are other, other industries who are doing worse or anything, uh, but who cares? We shouldn't compare. We should yeah. just enjoy the moment where we're living it. Ah, cool, we're in the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how the world truly looks like. Yeah. Um, uh, we shouldn't compare, we should just in, in, enjoy the innovation, at least that's what I'm doing, enjoy the innovation that we are going through right now. And, uh, you know, maybe it's a plus side that we're not uh, the first ones to do all of this new development, because uh, that way uh, another industry already got to burn a lot of money on the yeah. stuff that didn't work, and uh, we get to uh, implement the stuff that does work. So, uh, uh, so who cares? Man. Yeah, but uh, let's, uh, if, if there is another industry like the aerospace industry, which is a little bit farther, uh, it's uh, th the best opportunity for us uh, to yeah. learn from that. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. So yeah, that, yeah. Uh, uh, and um, yeah, how, how, how eager are people uh, in using these kind of uh, new technologies? Are they really committed to learn? Uh, how are you experiencing? Yeah, that? so I, I think what we see is that there are, uh, th there's a big difference in how people, how uh, companies and people approach this, this new development. Um, so there are some companies who are completely embracing it. They're implementing it immediately, like it's truly in projects and uh, they're making a big difference. I think uh, the Groene Boog uh, development of A1306 is, is a nice example of, uh, of that. Um, then there are other companies for whom this is more like, ah, okay, they're exploring, you know, they're like, what can we do with this? And they're trying to, to grasp the, the, the total concept, like uh, what it means for their company. Um, uh, yeah, they tend to be a little bit uh, slower, of course. Yeah, it's just with the dedication that you jump into it, uh, yeah. Yeah, and also for 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 that project, the Groene Boog, was it uh, 
uh, yeah, all these people they 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 can see see it as a as a big risk to to step into the unknown. Yeah. So to say, but uh, was that something that was uh, quickly uh, decided on, or was oh. it a long pr process for them to? I have to. Uh, how do you say that in English? I, I I cannot truly answer that question. I was not in, involved at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I I don't know. I don't okay. Know. Uh, hopefully we'll. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we can develop the most if everybody is committed and sees the potential out of it as, uh, as yeah. we, uh, we see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, what I, uh, what I had as a question was, uh, uh, what would you recommend for, for beginners, for people who don't know anything? I can just, uh, I'm John Doe and I can just use some Excel. Yeah. But uh, I'm a structural engineer and I want to uh, learn all these uh, new uh, interesting technologies. Yeah. Yeah, so um, and what I already mentioned uh, earlier. So if you if you don't, if if you are really scared about coding and stuff like that, then uh, start with uh, some visual programming. Do some Dynamo uh, scripting or uh, or Grasshopper or whatever. Um, but I would just say like don't don't be scared. It it is not scary. Start with a simple tutorial. Um, Go to. Th there are so many free tutorials out there. There's so much knowledge just to to grab. You know, just uh, this brings me. Sorry, this uh, I'm a little bit jumping uh, on topics, but this brings me also to what I really like about uh, uh, Python. There's this what you mentioned. There's a really big community. Uh, there's a lot of support. You can ask questions on Stack Overflow uh, or find your answer there because there's always somebody who already asked the same question as you. Um, also, there are a lot of open source packages which you can uh, eh, you can just also implement them immediately into into Victor. So I, I think it's a, a, re a really great tool. Don't be scared. Just do it. It's it's not so uh, it's not so scary, and you're gonna enjoy it honestly. Because look at the, eh, so that's also what what I like about our slogan: uh, automate the boring, engineer the awesome. That's what it's all about. Uh, about uh, creating. Uh, uh, Awesome tools which uh, allow you to develop uh, great projects uh, outside in the in, in in the real world. Um, yeah, so that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, to summarize a bit about uh, all the sessions that we had uh, recently, uh, we had some uh, structural engineers, architect, and uh, a lot of like different platforms. So we had uh, Packrun, yeah. and also Bureau Happold at their own uh, open source framework. Yeah, and now we have also Victor. Yeah, so I can imagine that. Yeah, all these uh, different platforms. Different platforms are uh, coming. Yeah, and uh, that, that's a, that's a really a trend. So um, uh, I, I'm wondering how this will uh, look evolve. like. In the, yeah, how this will evolve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm interested uh, too, of course. Um, so what I think is that um, probably uh, all of these platforms will find their own. Uh, it's with every software program. Everything has its pros and cons, and uh, so there will be a good reason to choose for one or the other. And then, um, yeah, I think there's so much to do that there is enough room for uh, multiple of these platforms. And uh, maybe we will have to work together one day to integrate the different platforms together. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, last time I, uh, I, uh, I made a small methodology about the hub and spokes uh, uh, method yeah. uh, because in aviation you don't uh, you cannot go from any airport to any other airport but, but you go through a hub and you have a transfer over there yeah and I I have the feeling that the same will happen with all these kind of different interoperability platforms so that you as a user you go to this hub mm -hmm. which is the uh, for example Victor because your company is related to it yeah but if there is some multi-company projects, there will be some uh, inter-platform links. Yeah, uh, th that sounds yeah highly plausible that, that something like that will uh, will happen. Well, what I also think is good to realize is that basically, uh, like a platform like Victor, is already a, a little bit such a hub in terms that um, uh, we are using different software packages with which we integrate. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, instead of just using my Revit model and then my CI model, like you can connect those and do something additionally within Victor. So in that sense, you are already a hub. Uh, and uh, also as was seen in the video, we are working on this uh, uh, 
another <laughs> a hub within a hub where you can create multiple applications and combine those again. So um, yeah, I, th I think it's good to realize that. Um, but of course, if you have another hub, you should also connect it uh, <laughs> yeah. with that one. Yeah, definitely. Okay, um, yeah, I have not seen any question coming so far. So I think uh, we'll leave it at, uh, at uh, that. And uh, yeah, thanks you for... Uh, oh, oh, sorry. I, oh, I see some coming in. Okay. Oh, now they're coming. Uh, okay. <laughs> Mike van Telge asks, uh, would Victor like to accommodate some kind of session where different companies could talk about the co-creation of Victor platform tools? Uh, so let me interpret that. So, uh, Michael, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm interested, like you want to build applications with Victor and then uh, deploy them to the world? Uh, I'd say, uh, let's do a coffee tomorrow. I'm uh, highly interested <laughs> in, uh, in your thoughts on that. Yeah, so... Uh, do you want me to... Uh, I think this could be uh, interesting if you bring uh, uh, companies who are using the Victor platform together yeah. and let them share their experiences. But, uh, so, and how do you... Uh, can you elaborate? Yeah, but yeah. You, uh, you, so some of uh, some companies are are using your platform. Yeah. And if you have some, uh, probably they can learn a lot from each other. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially if they are using the yeah. uh, or making the same yeah, no, no, uh, yeah. applications. So, um, personally, I think that's a, that's a very very uh, good idea, and it also. Um, like this, that's eventually, I think, where we would like to go is to create this community uh, where people would share their code. Yeah. Uh, so I'm now working as a um, um, uh, application developer, which means that if you uh, maybe don't have enough people uh, or you don't uh, know how to write Python code, the, our application team, uh, you can hire us basically and we will build the application for you. But obviously what we want is that you build your own application and that you become uh, your own uh, developer. Uh, and uh, what better way than to share knowledge in between uh, companies? Um, yeah, definitely where you, you've developed a tool which is uh, really useful also for other companies. Yeah. You can maybe sell it or rent it to the other companies where you have yeah. some, some kind of Victor marketplace. Of, yeah, of kind of, exactly, that, yeah. That would be really nice. That would be that, nice. Yeah, so what we already noticed is that there are obviously a lot of um, companies who have the same questions and who basically want to develop the same uh, tools. Um, sometimes we sell the application, of, of course, with consent of the of the owner of the original application to the other one. Uh, but we also have this that's very interesting, um, uh, the, the DEC, Digital Engineering Community. It's a combination of uh, uh, a few of the of the bigger construction companies. And they are now jointly working together, uh, building Victor applications and uh, are co-owners of the code that has been created. So they are uh, already yeah, building such a community with themselves. Mm -hmm. But obviously it would be, uh, yeah, it would be great if, if, if you would, yeah, could open it up and uh, could have more people uh, in, involved. So uh, yeah, good. Great question, Michael. So um, yeah, we're uh, already uh, a bit over time. So uh, let's uh, wrap it up. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation, Robert John. Yeah. And um, oh, wait, stop. Oh, you have, uh, I have a little present for you. Okay. It's a. Uh, I don't know if people can see it out there, but it's a little a rubber duck. Okay. It's like as a token, but you already know how to code. So I, I figured maybe you don't know how to code yet. Uh, give it a name and... Uh, I will call it Charles. Charles, all right, that's a good name. <laughs> so uh, and whenever you're stuck with a, with a problem coding, I don't know what, just to talk to Charles and then uh, he probably will uh, know the answer for you. Okay, great. To, uh, <laughs> great. Thank you very much for this gift. Um, so thank you, thank you again for giving the presentation and uh, thank you for uh, watching today. Uh, next month we will be back with uh, Anurag from uh, Swart Jansma giving a presentation about uh, disrupting architecture. So uh, hopefully see you in a month. Bye bye.